walk into a place and blow up a bunch of people killing themselves. If I could just control. That's the world we're living in tonight. And man is seeking for control. When we look at our political world tonight, it is such a shame of where it has gone to. We can read where it started from, but look where it has gone. Such a shame. When we look at the Word of God, and we find that God is God, and God doesn't change. My, what a God He is in a world of people that have gone away backward. That's right. We're nowhere close to where God wanted us to be. And that's true. As we search and study the Word of God, there are so many blessings that He has for each and every one. We sell ourselves short. Yes, we, do. we really do. By giving in to the flesh, the desires of our own selves, the desires of the world. We want to be somebody. We want to be something. We want to be seen and heard and noticed. There's nobody that wants to go around in the world today and be a nobody. We all want to be somebody. And so we start searching and we start looking. The problem is we look at all the wrong places. And we look at all the wrong things. We think that it's in the world, but it's not in the world. No, if you want to be somebody, it's in the Word of God how to be somebody. God's called us to come out from along the world and be a separated people. God's called us to come out and be different. Don't be like the world. We only occupy until He comes. He's got a better place prepared. And everybody that claims to be Christian is not Christian. Everybody that claims to have the Word of God doesn't have the Word of God. Everybody does not rightly divide the Word of Truth. But there's a lot of people claiming to be so. The Bible teaches us to know the difference and to discern the Spirit to see if it's of God or not. To know when you're in the presence of the Lord. And when you're in the presence of the Lord, to entertain the presence of the Lord. Oh my, how we need to entertain God. We're here because of Him. We're still alive and available to do things because of what God has done. It rains on the just and unjust. We are not to understand everything that goes on in this world, in this life, everything that happens to me. But one thing we can't do, we can put it in the hands of God. And we need to trust Him and believe that He has it all in control. Because when we have control in man, somewhere, some way down the line, man's going to fail us. We will fail one another sometime or another. It just happens because we're not perfect. When I look here at the Word of God, and I find that He's praying, Lord, bow down that ear unto me. Oh, so often, so often I pray, God, incline your ear unto me and hear my cry this day. This day, I realize that we need to call the name of the Lord this day. Each and every day we need to call the name of the Lord. Because as we go through the day, there are things that we're facing in this life. There are things every day. We don't know why our neighbors do what they did. We don't know why they do the things that they do when they go out and shoot people and they stab people and they rob people. The crooks, the enemy, the evil, the wicked. We don't know why. And we think, oh my, look what's happened to so and so across the way. Never knowing when it might come our way. Don't know when the car might run a stoplight and hit us. All right. Don't know when the person coming at us is on drugs and alcohol. Yes. We have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Yes. But we do know we're not going to live forever. But yet we live in a world of people that act like and they play like and they go around partying like they're going to live forever. They're untouchable. Nothing's going to happen to me. We're going to eat, drink, and party and have a good time. And when things begin to happen, if their life doesn't get taken right at the moment, they begin to call on the name of the Lord, call on the church, call on a Christian, a friend, somebody that will pray for them. There's people who claim to be atheists. They have turned around and said, pray for me. Call the church. What am I saying? We live in a world that know that 
there's a God. We live in a world that knows that there's a supreme being. We live in a world tonight that's turned upside down that need the Lord. God yeah. Almighty. And yet people go their own way doing their own thing until something happens. I read this and I think about David. Yes, he was a great king. He was a great man. He probably had been taught very well. Very well. But yet he was just another man, just like you and I. There came a time in his life when he failed God. And he failed God so terribly. But there also came another time in his life. God gave him a space of time. Do you know that sometimes we don't get that space of time to find a place of repentance? There's some people, they lose their life when they're in that sin. When they're out there drinking or taking drugs. When they're out there enjoying life, doing something they shouldn't be doing. Sometimes they lose their life at the moment. And their time is gone. It's, it's, it's over. It's over. I've got a friend that I've told many times, I'll not give up on praying for you until we bury you six feet under the ground. And when we do that, then I can't pray for you no more because there's no good that I can do for you. See, the Lord says to search Him while He may be found. To serve Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. To seek Him while you're young. He teaches us to go and seek Him while we're young and we're able and full of life and can do something for Him. Don't wait until you're not able to do something to turn to God. But you know what? He's a merciful God. Yes. He still will reach out and touch whosoever will call upon Him, whether we're old or whether we're young. But the Word still asks us to come unto Him. Forbid not the children to come to God. Sometimes we need to stop this merry-go-round of life that we are on. You know, we live in a world, we occupy, the cares of life kind of overtake us. We get so wrapped up, we've got schedules that we keep. we got to be here, we got to be there, and over there, and over there, and here again, and back and forth, and around and back. We get in such a hurry, even as saints of God, we get in a hurry. We're on a schedule, and we've got to meet this, and we've got to meet that. You know where I'm going. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And all of a sudden, we wake up and realize, my, where did the last 10 years go? My, where did the last 20 years go? And the older we get, we well, where did the last 50 years go? Because we was in such a hurry. And then we sit back and we think, I never took time with this person. I never took the time I should have with my children. Or I never took time with my uncle. And, you know, he's gone now. And hear the stories of so-and-so and how they was an outgoing person but I never got to know them because I didn't really go visit with them that much when they was alive. Mm. Now I hear how wonderful they were to be around. Right. We was in that world of living. If we don't take time to stop, life will overtake us. And when life overtakes us, it's not the life of living that we really enjoyed. It's that life of going and getting and being and trying to satisfy somebody else, you know, trying to look good, keep up with the Joneses down the street. And all of a sudden, there comes a time when we realize, what have I done? I've wasted my life with partying and with having fun and games and doing all the things to fulfill what I thought was right. And then all of a sudden, I realize I've left God out of the picture. I've left the Creator out of the picture. David was saying here, he bowed, God bowed down to me. Hear my cry. Lord, he, he was saying, Lord, here I am. I'm calling on you. I need you. 